Few animals evoke as much fear and loathing as rattlesnakes, and few animals have been as systematically persecuted. Vermont has 11 species of native snakes, including the only rattlesnake to call the Northeast home, the Eastern Timber Rattlesnake. Although timber rattlesnakes are a lot more fearsome looking than this garter snake, they're actually shy, secretive animals that seldom pose a threat to anything much larger than a chipmunk. But after decades of human harassment and habitat loss, timber rattlesnakes are found today in only a handful of locations in Vermont where concerned conservationists are working hard to ensure that the state's lone venomous reptile remains a permanent part of our natural heritage. Historically, we had a very robust population, very healthy, probably at least 20 densites, hibernacula, that we knew about. And now through both heavy habitat loss and particularly heavy duty persecution, we're down to now just a couple of densites, probably a couple hundred snakes statewide. And so we've got a real endangered population here. It's just hanging on in Vermont. This is a really harsh climate for rattlesnakes, um, and we are at the very northern tip of this animal's home range in North America. So we've got a genetic animal here that's genetically one of the fittest of the fit, and we want to hang on to it. That wasn't always the case. Rattlesnakes were killed on site in Vermont for decades, and the state paid a bounty on rattlers up until 1971. By then, timber rattlesnakes were wiped out in Vermont, save for one or two small remnant populations in the southern Champlain Valley. They finally received a break in the 1980s when timber rattlesnakes were added to Vermont's endangered species list, which made it illegal to kill them. Just as importantly, the Nature Conservancy began protecting critical wildlife habitats in western Rutland County, an area that is rich in biodiversity and home to Vermont's only native lizard. The Conservancy's approach overall is we have a number of priority areas around the state where we're trying to protect connected large areas of habitat. This is work that takes many years uh, with willing landowners over a period of time. If we look at the Southern Lake Champlain Valley area, we have the Taconic Mountains, we have the Adirondacks, the Green Mountains. It's a very important area for connectivity. So the Conservancy has been working here over many years to create a larger connected block of habitat that's protected. Rattlesnakes are just one of many wildlife species that have benefited from that protection, but they remain extremely rare. I've spent more than 30 years roaming the Champlain Valley and had never seen a single rattlesnake until I accompanied some folks from the Nature Conservancy and Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department in prime snake habitat. So what do we have here? I mean, it's, it's a rattlesnake. So we have a, a very young rattlesnake here, probably a yearling. The females have young at a birthing area, and she may drop about, maybe on average, about eight membranes. And inside those membranes are small live snakes that within a matter of minutes poke their way out of the sac. And then, unlike most other snakes, timber rattlers have, show some maternal care over the neonates and she'll hang with those snakes until they shed, their first shed, and then she may uh, leave shortly after that. They may or may not go with her, but if they don't, then they follow her pheromone trail, and she'll head back to the den. Communal denning sites are critical to the survival of rattlesnakes. As the days cool in the fall, scores of rattlesnakes congregate near rocky ledges and steep boulder fields, where they will hibernate in ancestral dens beneath the frost line during the long winter months. In the spring, timber rattlesnakes leave their dens and migrate to foraging and mating habitats. These outmigrations bring the snakes in contact with roads, houses, and potential predators, including illegal collectors. Timber rattlesnakes can live as long as 20 years, but they have low reproductive rates, and the loss of just a few snakes can be devastating to threatened populations one individual female can really only reproduce two or three times in her lifespan. It takes four to seven years for a rattlesnake to get to maturity where they can actually produce. So if we were to lose a couple of snakes and if we were to lose one pregnant female, that would make a very significant dent in the population. Adult timber rattlesnakes are commonly three to four feet long. 
They prey primarily on small mammals such as mice, voles, and chipmunks, which they ambush by lying motionless alongside logs and similar pathways. They use their venom to immobilize their prey, which is then swallowed whole. The rattles are a defensive mechanism and are shaken to warn off larger predators. Other snakes, like the common milk snake and black racer, mimic this behavior and are often misidentified as rattlers. Timber rattlesnakes are variable in color, ranging from all black to yellow with dark crossbands. They have a broad, arrow-shaped head with heat-sensing pit organs forward of their eyes, but their most distinct characteristic is the segmented rattle at the end of their tail. Newborns have a single segment or button. When the snakes shed their skins, they, they add another rattle. Um, and from what I understand, the snakes up here in Vermont, on average, uh, shed 1.3, 1.4 times a year. So it's difficult to, to, to accurately age a snake by its rat number of rattles, but you can say um, for every 1.4 rattles, it's a year old on average. In order to help rattlesnakes live longer in the face of increased human development, the Fish and Wildlife Department and the Nature Conservancy have teamed up to create the Rattlesnake Removal Program. A group of trained volunteers is available 24-7 to remove and relocate rattlesnakes where they are not wanted. One thing that's really wonderful about this program is that people who do find a snake don't have to be fearful of that snake continuing to be around. And it's a great opportunity to educate people about the snake and the fact that there really isn't too much to, to, to fear. Although timber rattlesnakes are extremely well camouflaged in the leafy litter of the forest floor, we still managed to find four snakes during our day in the woods. We left them alone, and they left us alone. We know from documentation that people that get bit tend to be the ones that are trying to handle snakes or kill snakes. And so if you don't want to get bitten, then simply don't try to handle a snake, just respect them from a distance. What we're trying to do is see if we can change the mindset from almost a universal fear and persecution of, of brow snakes to at least tolerance and, and maybe even a grudging respect for an, a critter that's just hanging on. It's part of Vermont's wildlife heritage. It's been here for thousands and thousands of years. They are the fittest of the fit. They are very important uh, part of the genetic pool. And as we enter a period of a large degree of change in our climate, we really need to have species that are at the edge of their range. They have the diversity and we hope the strength to be able to respond to whatever the changes might occur in our climate.